Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Like yourself, however, I am an atheist, and I thank God every day he made me one. I am, however, a 36-year-old, never-married, child-free man who has strayed very far from his upbringing. You see, Tom, my genetic father raised me to be a good little provider and male utility and to take care of women, to be just like him. My role was to study hard, go to university, get a degree in a well-paid profession. This I dutifully did, and I ended up a poindexter working in the IT department of a large company, a position I hold to this day. During my 20s, I had one bad experience with women after another. Looking back now, I can see that despite my good looks, I was never the alpha male. I was always the loser, nerdy type of man that women just wanted as a financial provider. Sadly, my genetic father passed away when I was 22, and I had nobody else to really guide me during my formulative years in the early 2000s. The early days of the internet, when good information about women and their devious and duplicitous ways was quite difficult to come across. I did the best I could out there. My first long-term relationship was with Miss Feminist, who was seven years older than myself. I had no idea of the danger I was in dealing with her. Talk about walking on eggshells. We fought practically non-stop for three years. She would sit on the couch some nights and eat two whole blocks of chocolate. My friend Dave called her a pig. But you know, I was a young, young man and Miss Feminist was all I could afford. The end came one night after she started with her women's rights crap again and I told her I wouldn't be taking her nonsense any longer. So I kicked her to the curb. Before she left my house, she was nice enough to kick in all my doors. Had a real temper, she did. Best thing I ever did, getting rid of her fat ass. The disturbing thought I still have to this day about her was she had to date a man like myself who was seven years younger than her because no man her age or older would have ever tolerated her rubbish. A young, poor man like myself was the best she could do at the time. After I dumped that bitch, I fooled around for a while with a string of one-night stands. Had a great time with many different women I met at bars and nightclubs, and then I met the woman who I would form a long-term relationship number two with, an American woman. Spent about seven years with her all up. She became absolutely intolerable after the first year or so as she revealed her true nature. I can't believe I stayed with her as long as I did. My fault though, Tom, as I chose her. I take full responsibility for my poor choice. Kicking her to the curb three years ago was a great decision. A decision I have no regrets about. Now, Father, please sit down, for I have some news that may shock you. It's the last three years of my life that I would like to confess to you about, for I believe that I may have sinned, and I seek your understanding and your forgiveness. You see, for three years now, I've been busy having sex with multiple, very attractive people aged in their early 20s. Stunningly attractive, in fact. The sex has been wonderful, amazing, by far the best sex of my life. The issue, however, is my sexual partners have not been real women in the traditional sense of the word. You see, I was so irritated at my exes and all the other women I've had dealings with over the years, what with all their nagging, complaining, cajoling, bitching, moaning, and so on, that I decided I was going to try something different. So I hopped on a plane bound for Thailand, and once landed, I asked my driver to take me straight to Pattaya. Once there, I started having sex with ladyboys, a practice I continued to this day. Wow, Tom, I cannot believe how great it was. Why didn't I do this earlier? Why did I waste so much time with genetic women back home? 
For as long as I could remember, I always wanted to fuck a she-male. Father, let me tell you a little about what it's like being with a she-male. Physically, they are very attractive. In fact, they are more attractive than the genetic Thai women, in many cases. This I found simply irresistible. You know, like Robert Palmer in that simply irresistible film clip. I just could not stop myself going with them, both the cockless and the ones who still had their cocks. As incredible as my ladyboy sexual partners look physically, dealing with them is a real pleasure, for they keep their mouths shut in all the ways that genetic women don't. The vast majority of women, as we know, can never keep their mouths shut and talk endlessly about stupid, pointless things that we men don't care one iota about. Incredibly and dishearteningly, women do seem to have a habit of keeping their mouths shut at the exact times we really want their mouths to be open, to perform oral sex on us. This is never an issue with the ladyboys. The ladyboys are up for sex on the same level as we men are. You should see the look of sexual hunger in their eyes. Not much to discuss with them conversation-wise. The vast majority of them don't have much to say. So nagging, complaining, bitching and moaning is never an issue with them. I know the Thai language. Studied it for three years now. And I did look for ladyboys who majored in political science, women's studies and the like. And I asked around, but I couldn't find any. How refreshing. Yes, Father, I have sinned. But I have good reasons for doing so, and I want to talk with you a little bit about these reasons, because I believe this is important. As we both know, marriage and living with women sucks. Bottom line, no matter what you do as a man, once you are living with a woman, she will end up trying to control you and prevent you from doing all the great things we men love to do with our time, like drink fine wine, ride fast motorcycles, enjoy peace and quiet and peace of mind. The list of things that we will no longer be able to do rises, of course, when children enter the picture. Don't have that problem with the ladyboys, as firstly, I would never live with one, and secondly, they can't have kids. No problem either with non-commitment and sleeping around. The ladyboys are very fond of their own freedom as well, let me tell you. The bad behaviour of women towards me in the Western world brought me to this point in my life where I've turned my back completely on them, drove me away from them and into the arms of the third gender in Thailand. To this, I really do thank them dearly, for I have achieved true peace of mind and sexual contentment. I will never be involved in a marriage, nor will I have the government involved in my romantic life in any way. I will never pay one cent of child support or alimony I'll never be a resource provider for an ungrateful bitch. I have freedom. I have money. I'm a man living true to his promiscuous nature. I have strengthened my friendships with my male friends, who I must say I'm growing increasingly concerned about. They have a real look of desperation in their eyes these days, and whilst they still look good physically, their wives for the most part, and with very few exceptions, look like an open casket funeral. I've greatly reduced any dealings whatsoever with manipulative women and certainly will no longer get involved with one and definitely not in the Western world. I'm a single man by choice who has walked away from Western women. Manipulation, nagging, controlling, critiquing, all the things that are business as usual in a traditional relationship in the Western world are no longer part of my lifetime. I know that you know how good this feels, given you live alone and deal with women only on your terms. I too live alone, and I deal with ladyboys, and sometimes with Thai women. But I deal with them on my terms, on a paid, short-time basis. We will enjoy the best of each other and avoid the worst. I tell each of my partners right at the beginning, as soon as we meet, that I'll treat them with respect, dignity, kindness, and will treat them like a human being. I tell them we will have a great time together and mutually respect and appreciate each other as people. When we come together, we have an amazing time 
And when we part, we look forward to seeing each other again. Being a nice guy never got me anywhere with Western women. Being a nice guy, when appropriate, together with Lycus 101, has paid great dividends in Thailand. Tom, Lycus 101 applies brilliantly when dealing with members of the third gender. I want you and your listeners to know that your advice works just as well with the third gender as it does when dealing with genetic women. I've been applying your teachings, Father, on the streets of Pattaya, Thailand. Your advice is gold and has protected me from making stupid, boneheaded decisions like shacking up with one ladyboy, becoming a sponsor for one, paying the family for a new water buffalo for the farm, etc., I'm sure you have some listeners who may be tempted to do the same thing I've done and apply your teachings to the third gender in Thailand. You may like to share with them this email about my experiences in Thailand, and you are most welcome to do so. You know, Tom, in the office, I never hear my married male colleagues using words like freedom, happiness, contentment, and so on. I suspect they pretty much all hate me for I have found true freedom. Freedom is found in avoiding marriage, avoiding living with people, avoiding commitment, obligations and the like, and instead remaining single, having financial independence, and travelling to cities like Pattaya, Thailand a few times a year to fuck your brains out with multiple, stunningly attractive people. In my case, I have found peace of mind and contentment with the ladyboys, But it should be remembered that Pattaya can be enjoyed brilliantly by men who are straight, gay, bisexual, or anything in between. If you ever make it there, Father, the first drinks are on me. I want to leave you, Tom, with an observation from the streets of Pattaya. Sometimes I see Western women who are there as teachers walking around on their own. You should see the look in their eyes. Pure desperation. Of course they're desperate. The Western men in Thailand won't touch them with a barge pole. Interestingly, generally speaking, Western women don't like Asian men. They're pretty much all too short and don't have enough money or wealth. So Western women's dating options in Thailand are, for the most part, extremely limited. Do you know how good it is, Tom, to see the look of desperation in women's eyes as I walk the streets with a stunningly attractive lady boy or a Thai woman? If I could capture how good it feels, the sheer satisfaction, I would send it to you, for I want you to feel it too. To experience the look of hate in the Western woman's eyes as she sees you with a person she could never in a million years ever look nor behave like. These Western women in Thailand hate me, but I don't hate them as I'm a tolerant man, tolerance being important, of course, in having to deal with their crap for so many years in the Western world. Keep up the great work, Tom. I hope that you forgive me for my sins. I love your show. You are doing a real service to your listeners. Kind regards, Jared. Postscript. The feminist taught me that gender is a social construct. Speaking about gender... Where are all the Western women customers in the bars of Pattaya? If gender is a social construct, wouldn't 50% of the bars be filled with women? I did actually spot a woman in the bar one time, but as I looked again, I could see that I was mistaken. It was actually a Western man who was almost certainly in Pattaya for gender reassignment. His wig gave him away. His behaviour looked very feminine, I might add and I believe he would be a good woman in time after the female hormones have kicked in. If he goes back to the Western world, he would blend in quite well in the the corporate office environment, but I do suspect he may be seen as being too feminine acting in comparison to his Western sisters.